The second lesson in this series shows you how to connect events generated by the user interface to event handlers in your application code. AccuTerm GUI programs are event driven. That is, user actions such as clicking a button or selecting an item from a list cause events to be fired. These events are connected to event handlers which are simply subroutines that you, the programmer, write. Each GUI object has a set of possible events. You select the events you are interested in handling in the Events tab of the properties for a particular object. It is good design practice to select only the events that are going to be useful for your application logic as there is some overhead in calling the event handler when an event occurs. Selecting events that serve no purpose in the application can degrade the application's response time. Let's open our order entry project in the GUI designer. Let's click on the form icon in the project tree to display our form. Before we add events to the application, let's open the associated program code which we created in the last lesson. We can access the program code by clicking on the Display Code Window button in our toolbar. The file name and item ID of the program is saved with our GUI project, so we can simply click OK to open the code. To make this sample program actually work, we need to access our customer order and product files. We are also opening a control file which is used to retrieve the next invoice number when creating a new order. Let's create a cust ID variable to hold the ID of the current customer and initialize it to null to indicate that we have not yet read a customer record. Now we switch back to the designer. The first thing we need to do is to know when the user has entered a customer number so that we can read the customer record from the database. We are going to use the validate event on the customer number text box for this purpose. The validate event is fired whenever the user moves away from a control which has changed. In this case, the validate event fires when the user has changed the data in the customer number text box and presses the tab or enter key or clicks on a different control. The validate event can be fired for other control types such as list boxes, check boxes, grids, basically anything that has a value that the user can change. Now let's write a handler subroutine for the customer number validate event. The easiest way to add an event handler is to right click the control and choose the event from the edit code menu. Notice that the code window is activated and the cursor is placed in the validate event handler subroutine. The code generator automatically created this event handler stub for us we simply need to enter the appropriate code to respond to this event. The default event processing code created by the code generator sets up several variables before calling an event handler. GUI app contains the ID of the application or project which fired the event. Similarly, GUI form and GUI control contain the IDs of the form and control that caused the event. GUI args contains event specific arguments as a dynamic array. When handling a validate event, GUI args contains the ID of the control that caused the event 
that is, the ID of the control that the user clicked or tabbed to, and the current value of the control being validated. The first thing we are going to do in this event handler is to check the reason the handler was called. If the user clicked the Cancel or Close button, we can ignore the event. Next, let's extract the new value of the customer number text box from the second attribute of GUI args. And then let's read a record from the customer file. If the customer does not exist, we use the AT GUI message box subroutine to display a warning message and set the active control back to the customer number text box calling AT GUI activate. Then we clear out our cust ID and cust rec variables and return. If the customer does exist, we extract the name and invoice list from the customer record and load these back into the form. We use the AT GUI set prop subroutine to set the value of the items property of the list box. And we call AT GUI load values to set the value property of the name as well as clearing the values of the other controls. For AT GUI load values, we create two dynamic arrays, one containing a list of the control IDs that we are updating, the other with a list of the corresponding values for those controls. Calling AT GUI load values is more efficient than calling AT GUI set prop for each control individually. Finally, we make the list box the active field by calling AT GUI activate. That's it. To make our sample program well behaved, we should probably clean things up when the user closes the program. When the user clicks the X in the corner, the form fires a close event. Let's make sure that the close event is checked in the Events tab. Notice that the close event is both checked and disabled. This is because the form close event is a mandatory event. If there were no close event handler, the user might not be able to ever close the program. Because of this, the code generator generates a default handler for the form close event. Let's look at the default handler. The default handler first hides the form, then it retrieves the number of visible forms that belong to our application object. When the number of visible forms is zero, we assume that all forms have been closed and that the program should end. To actually end the program, we delete the application object by calling ATGUI delete. Now let's add our cleanup code. Before we hide the form, let's release any record locks that we may have. That's really all the cleanup we need for this simple program. Later, when we add support for saving our updates, 
we will add more code to this routine to make sure that the user saves his data before closing the program. Let's add one more event handler. The close button on our form should perform the exact same function as the X in the corner does. So let's create a handler for the close button click event. Notice that the click event is already checked. The default event for a command button is the click event because you will virtually always want to process a command button click otherwise you would not have created the button in the first place. As before we can right click on the control and select the event from the edit code menu item. The code editor window pops up with the cursor positioned at the desired event and the handler we will add here is quite simple. All we really need to do is add a go sub to the forms close event handler. One last detail. Notice in the status bar there is a message informing us that the event decoder may require updating. The event decoder is a section of code that the code generator maintains for us and whenever events are added or removed from the program it must be updated. To update the event decoder we click the update code button on the toolbar The update code dialog has tabs for code sections, missing events, and unused events. To update the decoder, we just click the bottom update button. Let's switch back to the code window and save the program and compile the program. Now we'll save our project and close the GUI designer. Now let's give it a try. We'll run our program and our form is displayed. Now let's try entering a customer number and press the tab key. Notice that the customer was looked up and the name of the customer was loaded into our name label. Let's check the list for our order numbers and see if any lo orders were loaded. And look, we have orders here that belong to this customer. Let's change the customer number and see if we change customer names. Again, after pressing the tab key, the customer name is updated and so is the order list. Let's click our close button to see if the program will end by clicking the close button and it does, which is what we expect. So at this point we've learned how to use the GUI designer to create a form for a GUI application and now we've learned how to connect events from the user interface to business logic in a program to access the database and update fields on the GUI form. In the next lesson we're going to extend our knowledge of event handling and work on events to read data from each one of the selected items in the list box and populate the, the order uh, multi-value data set into the grid.